welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Orange Pi Zero 2. This is a new low-cost small form factor single board computer with some very interesting connectivity. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Orange Pi Zero 2 in its little white box, and in January 2021, this was priced on AliExpress at $18.80, with a limit of one per customer at this price. And with taxes and shipping, my order came to $28.58, or £21.89, delivered to me here in the UK. So, let's open up this uh, very low-cost single board computer. Seems to be a fairly straightforward unboxing. There we are, and uh, here we are. Does it need cutting open? It does, it is sealed. Or is that just a, a big... No, no, it's definitely sealed. I thought it wasn't for a second. Mr. Scissors is on hand and we can uh, cut our way in like that. Rather an unusual seal all the way down the bag, but there we are. And uh, here we are. Mr. Scissors didn't do his job properly. There we are. Here we have the Orange Pi Zero 2, which, uh, as you can see, has got supplied with it an external antenna already plugged onto the board. You can tell this has got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And this is an unusual form factor of single board computer. It's a very small board. So let's put it down next to some other single board computers so you can compare the size. And uh, there we are. And as you can see here, we've got a Raspberry Pi 4, we've got a Raspberry Pi Zero W, we've got a Banana Pi M20, and it's very clear that the Orange Pi Zero 2 sits between these boards very much in terms of its form factor. But the board it is closest to, if we just get rid of some of the others and we bring it in, the board it is closest to is this one. This is a Raspberry Pi 3A+. And so what I thought we'd do is to initially, as usually one of these videos run through the specifications of the board we're looking at, the Orange Pi Zero 2, and then we'll come back and do a comparison of the features in terms of these two boards here, the Orange Pi Zero 2 and the Raspberry Pi 3A+. So, here I am back again with our exciting new single board computer in the middle of which we can see the system on a chip, which on the Orange Pi Zero 2 is an all-winner 8616. And this has got a 64-bit quad-core CPU with four ARM Cortex-A53 cores running at up to 1.5 GHz, as well as an ARM Mali-G31 MP2 GPU. As you can see, there's no heatsink attached, and for most applications, one should not be needed. Next to the SoC are two DDR3 RAM chips, which on this board provide one gigabyte of RAM. There's also a 512 megabyte version of the Orange Pi Zero 2, but this particular model is the latest one gigabyte version that became available in December 2020. On the other side of the system on a chip, we then find an AW859A wireless chip, which offers 802.11 ABG and an AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. And we can see the tiny socket for the external antenna, which we saw earlier and which I've removed so we can take a better look at the board here. If we flick the Orange Pi Zero 2 over, I'm sure it won't mind. Underneath, there's not a lot to report on other than the fact that here we have our micro SD card slot for providing storage on the board. If we flick it back over, don't want it getting too disoriented, we can look at the main edge of the board where we find a single Type-A USB 2 port and then a micro HDMI port. And this is HDMI 2.0a and can support a display up to 4K at 60 frames a second. There's then a USB-C port which is used for powering the board, supplying the required 5 volts at 2 amps, and then next to that we have a gigabit Ethernet socket, which is highly unusual on a single board computer with this size of form factor. And so you might think we're now pretty much finished, but the Orange Pi Zero 2 still has some great features left to reveal. For a start, on the left edge is this 
26 pin connector that offers I2C, SBI, UART and multiple GPIO ports. And then on the right edge we find this 13 pin header which is very exciting indeed as it offers not just three more GPIO input output pins but also a PAL or NTSC composite video output, stereo audio output and wait for it the connections for two additional USB 2 ports. And so on this tiny quad core board we have access to three USB 2 ports if we need them along with gigabit ethernet, HDMI and onboard Wi-Fi. And so in hardware terms the Orange Pi Zero 2 really is very good value indeed. Right, just before we boot up the Orange Pi Zero 2 and put it through its paces, as promised earlier, I thought we'd do a brief comparison with the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus, because they are very similar boards in many respects. The Orange Pi Zero 2 is slightly smaller, but not a lot, and the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus is slightly more expensive, at about $25 or £23.40 at the time I'm making this video. Both of these computers are quad-core 64-bit. They both got four A53 ARM cores, which are clocked, as we said already, at up to 1.5 GHz on the Orange Pi Zero 2 and up to 1.4 GHz on the Raspberry Pi 3A+. In terms of memory, we've got 512 MB of RAM on the Pi 3A+, whereas we've got the gigabyte here on this Orange Pi Zero 2, although there is a 512 MB model. They've both got HDMI output, but it's up to 4K on the Orange Pi Zero 2, whereas it's HD on the Raspberry Pi 3A+. And both boards have got onboard Wi-Fi, onboard Bluetooth. They've both got a single full-size USB 2 connector, but as we've just been discussing, you can add two extra USB 2 ports to the Orange Pi Zero 2 via the connector down here. And also dominating the board, we've got gigabit Ethernet on the Orange Pi Zero 2, which we don't have on the Raspberry Pi. This said, there are things you've got on the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus you don't have on the Orange Pi Zero 2. Most obviously, you have got audio with a 3.5mm jack rather than being audio on headers. And you've got the camera and a display connector. So you can add a camera and an LCD display directly to the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus much more easily anyway when you could add them to the Orange Pi Zero 2. So I thought it was just worth comparing these two boards. If you want a slightly cheaper board, which has got more RAM, Ethernet socket, and the extra USB connectivity, you should probably go for the Orange Pi Zero 2. But if you want the camera connector, a display connector, then it's better to go for the Raspberry Pi 3A+, at least in terms of the hardware specification. Greetings. Here I am back again, and as you can see, I've now got the Orange Pi Zero 2 all connected up, and I've even connected in an additional USB 2 port. Here's an old USB 2 port I had lying around somewhere. I've connected it in via jumper lead to the right connectors on this GPIO header, and it works, which is just fantastic. That kept me really happy putting in that extra USB 2 port. And before we boot the board up, I should point out that the connectors here are very tightly spaced. They have to be given the size of the board, but it does mean you have to select your micro HDMI lead very carefully. I'm here using a Raspberry Pi 4 USB-C power supply and I thought initially I'll use a Raspberry Pi 4 micro HDMI lead. And here's the lead I was going to try from the Raspberry Pi 4. It doesn't fit. You physically can't get that in and use it alongside a standard USB-C connector. So I had to make sure I used a slimmer micro HDMI lead, which I happen to have lying around. Do be aware of that. Anyway, let's now turn on the power. There we are, a little red light appears on the board. And if we go across to its display of signal coming out of that micro HDMI connector, it just told us it was the Orange Pi, and so it was good to see. And it's now booting up. And we're booting here into a desktop Debian image made available by Orange Pi. And we're doing reasonably, I think. Oh, we've got to the bit where it looks like it's a coal mine where all the lights turned off. But no, no, here we are arriving on the Debian desktop on the Orange Pi Zero 2. And I'm just going to make my mouse pointer bigger. There we are. And if you're wondering, why didn't I do that earlier? It's because the setting gets lost every time you reboot. Anyway, this is 
a nice friendly looking desktop. It's very orange, isn't it? This is definitely a very citrus focused desktop. And let's just have a look at what we've got available in the install. It's nice and light, very few things here, just what you really need. As you can see, mail reader, web browser, lots and lots of settings. And I should point out in settings, if you want to change your resolution from the default for this image, which is 1280 by 720 to, for example, 1920, 1080, which is what I'm running here, you cannot do this by going into display. You might try going here. You will find it simply won't work. What you need to do is to go down to settings and go down to orange pie config like that, which is cool, takes you into the terminal. You need to enter here the root password, which is orange pie. There we are, and it now launches this little utility. Well, you need to go into system and security settings, the first option, and then when the second menu comes up, you go into edit boot environment, and here you could edit the display mode, the resolution of the system. I just thought I'd point that out to you, it's rather useful to know. Anyway, we'll close that down, we don't need that anymore. Just show you what else is down here. Got lots of settings as you can see, most of which work very well indeed. There's accessories, we've got the Genie Editor under development, we've got a graphics viewer, we've got Chromium and HexChat under internet, we'll try Chromium in a second. We've got a multimedia player and various audio controls, as you can see. And under Office, we've got the Atri Document Viewer. Although you can, of course, install LibreOffice or any other Office programs you want. But the particular reason I've loaded this in is because there's some very good documentation for the Orange Pi Zero 2. And this surprised me because in the past, the reputation of Orange Pi boards and something I very much found myself is it's been great hardware with very little support. So it's good to see we've now got some decent documentation. This is very, very good documentation for the Orange Pi Zero 2. And I'm not quite sure why there's a user manual and a user guide. This is the manual, here is the guide. The guide is much more graphically heavy. It'll take a second to come in. Let's just let it settle. There we are, but as you can see, here's the official Orange Pi user's guide for the Orange Pi Zero 2. It is good to see we've got this documentation available. I think we should just launch the browser to show you the performance of that. So we'll go down to Internet and Chromium. And Chromium, I guess, is a slightly heavy browser for this system, but I keep having to remind myself this board has got the same power in terms of processor cores and available memory as we had on the Raspberry Pi 3B and 3B+. In fact, it's slightly faster than Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B+. So it isn't that lacking in power at this board. Let's just get rid of that. And as you can see, I've set my home page here to the download page for Orange Pi. If we just go down to the second section, I think it is. There it is. Look, these are the things you can download from Orange Pi for your Orange Pi Zero 2. There's the link to the user manual, so I was just showing you. We're running here the Debian image, and we've also got a new Ubuntu image available. And I should point out there are both desktop and server images available for both of these distros. And then there's also an Android image here, although I failed to get Android to work, because you have to install the Android image on a micro SD card using a program called Phoenix Card, all detailed very carefully in the manuals. But you have to use a certain version of Phoenix card. And unfortunately, the one available on this page, if we go all the way down to the bottom, somewhere down here, the version of Phoenix card here is not the one referred to in the manual, which specifically says a version this early will not work. And even if it would work, if we click on that, you'll discover the link is broken. So that doesn't help us very much. And I have managed to get a version of Phoenix card running, which should have worked with the images available here, but it didn't. And eventually, after a few hours, I gave up and decided I wasn't going to risk installing viruses on my laptop by finding images of Phoenix Card all around the internet in various places that might not be particularly safe. So for that reason, I've not managed to get Android running. And I'm sure some people are already in the comments going, Chris, you can get Android running by doing this or this or this. And I'm sure you can. But from my point of view, this is the software made available for the board via Orange Pi themselves. And I think it's reasonable to expect that this will directly work. Final thing I'm going to do here is just to bring up for you my standard YouTube test clip. I'm sure this will not work. There's no graphical acceleration here. Indeed, if I grab the edge of this frame, this window and drag it, you will see there are real problems going on here with this in terms of drawing the display. 
but let's speed on through until I've got YouTube playing back full screen in 1080p, which, as you can see, is really not a good experience. And I'm well aware the Orange Pi 2 is not intended to be a streaming media player, it is intended to be an IoT device. And in that context, it's a nice piece of hardware, but I still think it's got some issues when it comes to software support. When it comes to my final assessment of the Orange Pi Zero 2, I am somewhat schizophrenic. On the one hand, I really like the board. It's a great small form factor single board computer. It sells for a very good price, and it's got very good connectivity for a board of its price and form factor. And Orange Pi made available some very good documentation, so there's lots of positives associated with the Orange Pi Zero 2. This said, and you know what's coming next, there are still some software issues to contend with, the sort of issues you wouldn't have to contend with if you bought a model of Raspberry Pi. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.